Are you falling for a guy who doesn't want you the same way you want him? Are you tired of noticing that he's not investing in you the way you're investing in him? Do you keep hoping that he's gonna step up his game but keep getting silently crushed by his lack of desire? Are you carrying the weight of a one-sided relationship but can't seem to break away from his orbit? If this sounds and feels like you, today I'm gonna show you how you can finally stop wanting a guy who's not that into you. Unrequited love is one of the most painful things a human being can experience. And if you're in the middle of this storm right now, if you're really going for someone who is either breadcrumbing you or giving you just enough to keep you in the mix, but not really what you're looking for, maybe it's a little hot and cold where sometimes he's really into you and then he pulls back and, and you keep wanting him, but he's not really committing to what you're looking for, the first thing that has to happen, you need to have a compassionate view of yourself because it's very easy for you to not just feel the wrath of his disdain, not just feeling like he's rejecting you through his lack of desire, but also punish yourself internally because you want him. Feeling a sense of shame, feeling a sense of, I shouldn't be going through this, I shouldn't be experiencing this, like I'm wrong for feeling this way. And while you definitely wanna change the connection to a man who's not giving you what you want, if you feel the punishment from him, but you also punish yourself, then you're in the worst space to move forward. You need to dial it back and understand that it's not that there's something wrong with you. There's four conditions, there's more, but I'm sharing four right now, that make moving forward from something like this more challenging. If you understand them, you can be more compassionate and know that it's not that you're not intelligent enough to change this, but that you just need to change your strategy and move forward. The first one is, Sometimes desire is increased through this type of uncertainty. Why? Because when you can't have something, the forbidden fruit historically, biblically, is something that you want more. The fact that you don't know if he's gonna show up creates a sense of expectancy and a sense of desire, movement, passion. It's just that when you overdo it, that desire and that expectancy, that roller coaster of emotions starts creating a void in your heart, starts making you feel rejected, starts lowering your self-esteem. But that's one reason why it happens. Number two is you might be relieving the place you call home. If you grew up in a household where one or both parents were somewhat avoidant, if you needed to do things to please them, connected with you in such a way that you felt less than, and many of us have had experiences like this, then it's not strange for you to try to fill the void of that emptiness that you experienced during childhood in your adult life. Sometimes you choose partners that remind you of the feeling or dynamic you have with one of your parents or one of your siblings. And rather than saying, There's, I'm, I'm flawed, I'm broken, it's like, well, let's recognize what it is and let's start changing it. Third reason why this happens is because your self-worth, my dear, might not be as strong as it needs to be. Sometimes things you experienced in childhood, things you experienced in adulthood, not getting what you want for so long, breakups, betrayals, start chipping away to that sense of worth and self-esteem. And when that is experienced for a long time, then you start thinking that what you're getting right now is okay, it's acceptable, it's normal, and it's not. The last one is the feeling of scarcity. Again, when you haven't had what you wanted, and you connect with someone that in your mind for some reason, whether it's through a real, objective view or may, more often than not a trauma bond or a feeling of wanting to feel the void that you wanted to experience in your child, you tell yourself, this is the person I've been looking for. He's such an amazing human being. He's so unique and different. Then you start fearing that if you lose connection with this guy who by, is not giving you what you want, that you'll never get it again. It's going to take three, four, five years for you to create this strong connection. And you'll tell you, even tell yourself, I'll never be able to find a connection like this one again. And those things you tell yourself that create a strong feeling of scarcity that keep you in the loop of connecting with someone who's giving you a lot less than what you want. First one is radical honesty. You need to take an honest look at what's taking place. Don't make it worse than it is, but don't make it better than it is. I have to imagine if you've been taking crap from someone for a long time, if you've been getting less than you want and deserve, at some level you're justifying it. At some level, you're lessening the intensity of it. At some level, you're saying, it's because of this and you're giving him a mental hall pass for, for what's going on. And what needs to happen right now is you need to come clean to yourself and say, I am now cognizant that I'm getting a lot less than I want. I'm pursuing a guy. I'm trying to make it work and he's not corresponding with the same level of intensity or pursuit or hunger or desire. So without making it worse, just say, this is what's happening. 
And when you say it, it might really punch you a little bit because you might have been avoiding it. One strong definition of what's taking place can change the course of your destiny going forward. Number two is you need to take off your rose-colored glasses. It is very common, and I've had this happen with so many women who reach out to me in a situation like this, who are telling themselves a lie, like this is everything I want in a man. He's everything I've been looking for. He checks all my boxes, and that is utter bullshit. Here's why, because your boxes should include someone who wants you consistently. Your boxes should include someone who is pursuing you, not just waiting for you to take action. Your boxes should include someone who really craves intimacy with you. Your boxes should include someone who is driving things forward. Your boxes should include someone who is willing to take an honest look at himself and recognize when the balance of the relationship is off and change it. Your boxes should include someone who wants you, who desires you, who craves you. And if your boxes don't include that and you're telling yourself that this is what everything you're looking for in a guy, then you need to redefine what everything means. And you need to take off those glasses and recognize that as much as you get some level of intensity with him, you're also getting some punches that are lowering your chances for love in his lifetime. Number three is you need to find the core need you're fulfilling through this guy, which is not just him, and start feeling those needs in a higher way in other areas of your life. It might be that the biggest thing you're getting from him, the biggest need you're meeting from him is a feeling of adventure. Maybe your life right now is slightly boring in some ways, predictable, and this is the thing that creates a sense of romantic adventure and newness and difference and surprise. And if that's the case, then we need to find other parts of your life that you can really step up big time to feel that sense of intensity because you're meeting it right now in a way that's hurting you. Maybe what you're needing right now is certainty and you feel like if you connect with this guy, at least you don't have to be scared and be single and in this world of online apps that feel horrible for you perhaps. So maybe what you're seeking right now is a sense of groundedness and you may be just getting crumbs relative to what you want, but that might be what you're going for. Maybe you feel like this guy is someone who's making changes as a result of your connection, so you feel in some way mistaken that you're creating growth in his life, that you're contributing to him in ways that go above and beyond, and maybe what you're seeking right now is a sense of contribution. Maybe you feel like this guy is so special, so unique, so high value in your mind, that being next to him adds more value to your life. Maybe you're seeking a sense of significance. Maybe you feel like, well, he's so awesome that if you're really honest with yourself by being with him, that makes me more awesome because this awesome guy wants me slightly. So you need to recognize, is it significance? Are you looking for adventure? Are you looking for safety? Are you looking for a sense of contribution? Is it a mix of all of them? And once you recognize that it's not just him, you're meeting your needs in unhealthy ways and you can start figuring out healthy alternatives for you to step into your life in a major way where you're not dependent on this dude to do it. If you want to move forward from him, but you don't feel the needs in healthier ways, you're going to be stuck and thinking that it's him. Before I go into steps four through seven, if you're watching this and you're single, or you're in a situation ship where you're almost single because the dude that you're with is not really into you, then my hypothesis is you don't understand the true reason why you're still single. What I want to do right now is if you go to the first link in the description of this video, I've created a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. Go to that link, you'll see a page that looks like this, and answer a few simple questions. And in 60 seconds or so, you'll have the answer to the question why you're still single. And better yet, you'll have a report that shows you based on your specific mind spot, what's the number one action you can take starting today to attract the guy you want. Step number four is I need you to start reclaiming your worth. I'm going to give you a very simple challenge to do this. I want you to choose something that makes you feel scared every single day for the next two weeks and do it. And it could be something simple, it could be something big, do something healthy. I'm not asking you to do something that risks your life in an unhealthy way. Do something healthy that is scary for you. Maybe it's a conversation, maybe it's putting yourself out there in a different way, maybe it's writing your first poem. Maybe it's recording a video of some sort. Maybe it's saying thank you to someone that you've been scared of saying thank you to. Or maybe it's saying I'm sorry to someone that you need to say I'm sorry to. Whatever that thing is, every single day for the next 14 days, I need you to do something that really scares you to start remembering the truth of who you are and start going away from the feeling that this guy is the end all be all in your life because you're going to find that there's multiple avenues of fulfillment and meaning. Number five is 
speak up. And there's two different ways you can speak up. Number one way would be if you've had multiple conversations with this guy and he's not stepping up, the conversation speaking up means saying, thank you so much for what you've been, thank you for who you are in my life, I really value you and I need to value myself more and I need to take a break from this situation. I need to take some space to be with myself, to figure out how to get what I want. If you decide that you want something like this in a stronger way, in the ways we've talked about before, then reach out to me. If I'm single, I'll, I'll consider it. If I'm not single, I'll be super sorry, but that's it. Now, if you've never talked to him about it, or if you've kind of hinted at it, but not, not really come clean, then the speaking up means saying, I really like you, I really appreciate you. There's a little bit of difference between what I'm looking for right now and what's happening. If you want to continue connecting with me, here's what I would need. So if it's in your heart to want to continue connecting with me, you should find value in this connection. If you want to take this all the way, then here are the three, four things I need you to start doing differently for me to really want to continue investing in this relationship. And then you can take a step back, which means let him do his work. Stop doing, making his lunch and doing his homework. Let him step up. That doesn't mean you don't call him ever. That doesn't mean you don't connect with him. That means that you lean back a little bit to allow him to do the things that you have not been allowing him to do by not speaking up and also by enabling him by doing those things for him. Step number six is if you're taking a break from this guy, I need you to start creating new connections. I need you to start remembering that you can make it rain. You don't have to wait for rain to come. You can make it rain by showing up, by connecting with human beings, by being your fun self, by exploring what's possible, instead of thinking that you have to hold your breath for someone who doesn't want you. You can't love him more than you love yourself. You need to love yourself in action, and when you do, there's more chances for him to come back and say, I want this, but if he doesn't, you can still get what you want through connecting with human beings who will want to fill that list of items that you're looking for, including wanting you, connecting with you, desiring you, and pursuing you. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it means a lot to me if you subscribe to this channel and click like on this video. And if you want to figure out more ways to get exactly what you want out of a relationship, then I invite you to watch this video right here.